The Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission ZAC, has launched an investigation into the alleged illegal sale of part of the late national hero and lands and agriculture minister Perrin Shearer's estate. It is alleged that some of the late former Air Force commander's children were behind the illegal sale of his assets a year after the decorated soldier died from COVID-19 complications. Newsday understands that Shearer's daughters, Tatenda and Cynthia, allegedly connived with Tawanda Zulu, who is reportedly Shearer's son, and sold Shearer's rare eye lodges at Arcadia Dam in Bandura for US $1 million to one Kangara, son of the late gold miner, Kudzai Kangara. All the three are beneficiaries of the late Shearer's multi-million dollar estate. Shearer's rare eye lodges have since been rebranded to Kangara Resort. The matter is being investigated by Zach under case reference number HCR 1160921. Shira's other daughter Rufro Stephanie, also a beneficiary of his estate, has reportedly made an application at the High Court seeking to reopen her father's estate, citing irregularities in the execution process, which includes appointment of executor. She argued that as the Shiree family trust executor, the resort could not have been sold because it was part of the assets under the family trust. Rufro also alleged that the farming area of the properties where Shearer's Rare Eye Lodge is located now belonged to Zulu. She claims that Kangara, who has taken over the resort, is hosting musical gigs every Saturday. Social media flyers also reveal that Kangara hosts gigs during weekends at Arcadia Dam charging US $20 for VIPs and US $10 for the general public. Last weekend, musicians Taki Vibes and Gemma Griffiths held a gig at the farm. Rufro said she was not consulted when her siblings in Kangara sealed the deal. I have distanced myself from anything to do with the estate. I don't understand how the resort was sold. At first, they claimed it belonged to the government, but I knew that was a lie because my father would not have invested so much in a property that didn't belong to him. So here we are today. They have sold the resort to Kangara for US $1 million. The question I have for Kangara is how could he have bought something before liquidation? Did he even do due diligence inquiries prior to purchasing the properties? Zach spokesperson John McAmeer confirmed that the matter was under investigation. We have the case and we are investigating it, he said. Dot efforts to get a comment from Kangara were fruitless as his number was unreachable. Rufro also challenged the appointment of former Attorney General Sabusa Gulen Debel as executor of the late National Heroes estate, accusing him of bias. She also accused her siblings Cynthia and Tatenda of drafting a fake 1995 will purported to have been prepared by Shirey, which allocated them more inheritance than the authentic will. In the 1995 will, Shirey bequeathed 50% of his bank savings and insurance policies to his now late son, Titus and the other half of savings to Tatenda and Cynthia, and all other children yet to be born. A death notice filed at the master of the high court showed that Tatenda, Cynthia, Zulu, Rufro Stephanie and Tanaka Shirey, reportedly also known as Tanaka Muspamhiri, were listed as children and beneficiaries of the late Shearer's estate. Rufro questioned why Tanaka and Zulu were included in the distribution list when they reportedly had no national identity documents bearing Shearer's name, as well as why the other children received shares on Shearer's properties when the 1995 will stated that they would only get bank proceeds. Tawanda stayed with the family for 10 years and still has no ID. Why is Tanaka included in the distribution account as Tanaka Stephanie Shirey when she has no ID? Tanaka is said to have taken DNAs with an uncle and the DNAs matched above 90% to suggest that he is her real father. And then on the master's appointment, 
if he was appointed by the will, why is the executor date of not testamentary, and the document has a stamp for the 20th, when signed on the 21st of August. She questioned why a public office would forget to change date stamps. The letter also shows Mr. Sabusa Gulen de Bell came as an executor because he was appointed by the master of the High Court. This proves the long standing argument that he was no longer the late's lawyer, that is why he didn't come to read the will. Dot through her lawyers, Tapera Muzana and partners, Rufro Stephanie, wrote to the Master of the High Court on November 3, 2021, complaining about the deliberate and fraudulent omission of some properties in the distribution list of the late minister's estate. In response to her complaint, in a letter dated November 9, 2021, the Master of the High Court advised her to make a list of the assets that she alleged were left in the distribution lists. Rufro said she would challenge the master, executor, and Tatenda, Cynthia, and Zulu's shenanigans. Zulu referred Newsday to the master of the high court. Kangara had always had his farm in the said area. The lands ministry can attest to that. His, Kangara, involvement in the matter is not necessary. I will not comment on this issue. But the executor of the master of the high court can give you answers to the questions, Zulu said. Tanaka said she was very sure that she was Shira's daughter, adding that she had DNA evidence. Whoever is making the allegation is selfish. If we go by the 1995 will, why would the late Shiri list me as a beneficiary to his estate? if it is monetary, when he knew I was not his daughter. Cynthia refused to comment and referred all questions to Gulen de Bell. My father's estate is being handled by the executor de Bell. He is better placed to respond to your questions, she said. Repeated efforts to get a comment from Gulen de Bell were fruitless as he was not picking up calls. But in an emailed response to a Dean Lovu of Tapera Muzana and Partners last week, Gulen de Bell and Partners stated that they had handled Shira's estate in compliance with the Administration of Estates Act. There is no legal basis for expecting a response from our office. We are actually waiting for the view of the Master of the High Court on that letter. We have handled the late General Shearer's estate in compliance with the law, being the Administration of Estates Act and the legally valid will. A close relative of the Shirey siblings, who spoke to Newsday on condition of anonymity, said the row over the late Shearer's estate among his children was an issue of concern. What we wanted was proper distribution of our late relative's estate in a dignified manner. We just hope that those involved in the legal procedure of distributing the estate will follow due process. Dot Rufro said no one was above the law in the Second Republic, be it a sister or relative, adding that they should face the music and stop treating her father's estate like a tuck shop.